reaction now from Tennessee Republican Congressman Diane Black. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, it feels like all of the pressure is on the Republican Party. And, you know, it's so ironic in my mind because there have been 18 shutdowns over 13 years. Only once was the GDP down. In the last three shutdowns, the stock market was up 37 percent, 23 percent, 32 percent. So are Republicans in danger of, of going into or cutting a deal that they don't want uh, because of uh, p PR pressure? You know, I think we're going to come out of this um, just fine at the end of the day. There are always negotiations. And as you know, Charles, here in Congress, we wait until the last minute, which I don't always agree with. But that's where we are on this continuing resolution. In my opinion, we're going to get a deal. Um, we cannot at this point in time disrupt what, what you've already indicated is that the stock market is doing well. We also need to fund our military and this is very, very important that we don't disrupt that because we have, uh, right now we have a military that's suffering from sure. not being fully funded. And so this is important that we would show the American people that we can do our job, we can govern and we can move forward. Uh, and, and I've got breaking news, and I want your opinion on this as well. I want to share with the audience. It's coming in more good news, by the way, from the tax reform. Apple now anticipated that it will pump $350 billion into the economy thanks to repatriation. By the way, expected to add 20,000 new workers. Congressman, I mean, with that kind of wind in your sails uh, with the Republican tax plan, hitting America in a way like it's an economic prosperity bomb, you certainly have a lot of uh, strength going into these final days of negotiations, don't you? Oh, I believe that we cannot stop this wind. And we've talked about this for the last three years that we have been working on this tax reform bill, is that we could only get there, we would really actually see the results. And we're seeing those now. And uh, as you've already said, we have a wind at our back. But it's more important that it's the American people that benefit by this. It's the wages that go up, um, the decrease in their burden on how many taxes they're paying. And we see something that is happening that hasn't happened in years in this country, and that is optimism. And so so we don't need to have a government shutdown where we reverse that optimism right. and go into a pessimistic mode. And of course, that $350 billion will be over the next five years. You, you, you started the interview by suggesting there would be a last-minute CR deal, because there's always a last-minute CR deal. But it doesn't, uh, it doesn't resolve any of the underlying problems. And in this case, uh, it feels like we've got an atmosphere where we know Democrats want some sort of a DACA deal. We know President Trump wants his wall. He wants immigration reform. And I think the American people kind of want all of that together. Uh, so would it be a major mistake to say, hey, you know what, let's take it to the final moments, do a CR, kick the can down the road for five or six weeks and go back to the drawing board? I think the DACA deal is one that we can be optimistic about. Again, we saw what happened where we had Democrats and Republicans and the media all in the room listening to what the issues are. I think we have to do this right. I think we shouldn't um, do it by a new knee jerk, that we should have agreement between the Democrats and the Republicans. And so let's continue to fund the government while we're working on a deal on that. It's very important um, that we get put into place the things that we have promised the American people, that we're going to secure our border, um, that we're going to look at chain migration. We're going to look at the lottery visa program, and we are also going to look at the, the DACA, which was a program that was put in place um, by the former president by an executive order, and it should come through Congress, and that's the right place for it sure, to be. Sure. President Obama used executive fiat. President Trump says he, right. he's going to present it to Congress to get the job done. And, and f for you, what, would a DACA compromise uh, be ultimately amnesty, uh, a path to citizenship? Is that something that you would be open to in return for all the other items that you just mentioned? Yeah, and, and those are pieces that are on the table. Here's what I know is that these uh, children came to this country uh, with e parents who were e that brought them here illegally. This is not something that they asked for or even knew was happening to them. And so I think we have to realize that. Um, to the other end of that, I think we do have to hold the parents accountable. I don't think there should be a path to citizenship for those parents because they broke the law, and I think they should be held accountable. It is a different story with these children, and I think then we've got to find a way um, to make sure that we hold those accountable that broke the law at the same time, um, give an opportunity for those who had nothing to do with breaking the law and have lived in this country and uh, abided by our, our laws here in this country. One final thing. It uh, looks like uh, an extension on the CHIP program has been uh, thrown into the mix, perhaps to make sure yes. that a CR is, is, is a viable option so that we don't have the government shut down on Friday. Uh, that's another area where it seems to me that Republicans have some leverage uh, to, to negotiate and get the things that they want. 
I, I think there are two things here. One is to say that we are going to fund the Children's Health Insurance Program, and it's going to be done for six years, which is much more than even the Democrats ask. And then the second thing is our military. How can the Democrats say, no, I don't want to fund the military that keeps us safe? Uh, well, they put their life on the line, and we're not going to give them the kinds of tools that they need in order to uh, protect this country and to keep them safe so they return home to their families. I don't know how you can make that case uh, for your constituents, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican. Uh, I think all Americans want to make sure that we're taking care of the men and women who have put their life on the line for this country and that also children are taken care of with their health insurance. These are two pieces that I would think the Democrats would not want to have a negative image of that in their own districts. And I, I would tend to agree with you. Congressman Black, always a pleasure. Thank you very much.